wrapping up our Getting Started series with Redtail Tutorials, this one's going to be talking about site preferences. One of the cool things about Redtail is that each individual user has their own preferences to actually set up little different things about the CRM uh, from, from different from everybody else. All right, so I'm actually going to show you how to go through each one of those preferences and what each one of them mean. Now, every user can go up to the top right-hand corner, click on their name, and click Preferences. That's where they're going to find their site preferences. So we're going to go through each one. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on each one, but I do want to point out some of the big things uh, in each section here as we scroll down. First, we have General Options. The two biggest ones here are being able to change our login screen, session timeout, and then of course we can change our time zone as well. Now maybe you don't want to see today's overview first thing, maybe you want to see your calendar. Well that's where we can change it. We can go ahead and just click on that and it changes our login screen to our calendar. We can always go ahead and change it back whenever we want. Likewise with session timeouts. Are you tired of getting logged out of Redtail every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes? That's okay. You can change it anywhere between 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, or all day. That's my favorite one. I always pick all day as well. And then, of course, you can change your time zone. One of the most important things you should remember about, about preferences is that when you change them, make sure you go up to that green button and save your preferences in each section. All right, because the last thing you want to do is go through all these preferences, change a ton of stuff, and then forget to save. That's no good. Underneath that, we have activity management. Now, this primarily has to deal with how your calendar is going to look initially. Now, we talked about the calendar in one of the previous Getting Started tutorials. This is where you can set your defaults. Okay, and the first ones that we have here are default calendar view. Do you want to see your day, your week, or your month first thing? Likewise with start and end times. We've gotten plenty of calls before asking us why the calendar starts at 2 a.m. and why it ends at 1 p.m. and how useful that is for people. Obviously, it's not. So you can actually go into your preferences, change when you want your calendar to start and end. If you want your calendar to go to 11 o'clock at night, that's cool. Go ahead and do it. You can have it be a 24-hour calendar, a 12-hour calendar, whatever you want to change in your calendar, you can do it right here. And just below that, we have our time slots. We have 15, 30, and 60-minute time slots. 15 minutes, you're going to see four boxes in between each hour. 30 minutes means you're going to see two boxes. And 60 minutes, you're going to see one box between every hour. The most commonly used one is 15 minutes. It's the most detailed one. And then below that, we have a bunch of default toggles on and off to where we can turn on and off other activities or things like completed activities, all-day events. Do we want to see them initially or do we want them hidden? Likewise, with client reviews, seminars, we can choose default activity types. All of that can be done in activity management. Just below that, we have some that affect the contact record. First is a security measure. Uh, this toggles on and off whether or not the tax ID on a contact record is shown or hidden. Now, on a contact record, you can always click to show that tax ID, and that's fine, but it's actually going to log those clicks in the back end. So it is a security measure that you can get in touch with Redtail support and find out who has been looking at these tax IDs. If you want them to be hidden, go ahead and click yes. If you want them to be shown, go ahead and click no. Client notes dictates how many notes on a client notes page we are going to see. Are we only going to see 10 notes, 25 notes, 50 notes uh, before we have to go and you know click next to see the next group of notes? And then also we have default client notes view. My opinion, you should have every single one of these checked. We'll go ahead and save those preferences here, which is going to take us back to the top of the preferences section. Let's shoot back down underneath contact record and talk about the notification options. These are really helpful, all right? Basically, you'll get an email if any one of these is turned to yes. If you are assigned an activity, you'll get an email. If you've assigned an activity out, whether it be to yourself or to another user, and it's completed, you'll get an email. Likewise with workflows. If you're assigned a workflow task, you're gonna get an email. If you've assigned a workflow task out, or if you're the owner of a workflow and somebody has completed that task, you'll get an email. So it's all about making sure that you are in the loop on what's going on in your CRM. Just below that, we have reminders. We can toggle on and off how far in advance or how much past due. We would like to see reminders based on birthdays, anniversaries, client reviews, things like that. So birthdays, let's say we want to see them 30 days in advance and say 15 days past due. Likewise with client reviews, let's pick 45 days in advance and 15 days past due. 
we can go ahead and save those. That's where they're going to show up in our reminder section on our today's overview page. Let's scroll down a little bit further. Underneath reminders, we have searching. And we have only one for searching, which is an auto redirect. Basically what that means, if you run a search and it brings back a single record and this is turned to yes, then it's gonna automatically send you to that page, all right? So you can turn this on, you can turn this off completely up to you. And below this, we have the emails. And this is where you can set up email preferences. You don't have to be using Redtail's email hosting service. You can be using any email service. Anyone can be hosting your email. You can choose an external or in internal email client. Basically, the difference between the two is external. When you click on an email address, it's going to open up on your desktop. It's going to open up typically in Outlook or whatever you're using as your default email client. Internal means that when you click on an email address, it's going to open up within Redtail. Now, keep in mind that no matter what we choose here, if we want to run a broadcast email from the advanced search page, that is always going to be internal. No matter what we choose here, broadcast emails are always internal, and that's an important note to remember. Below that, we can put our display name, our company name, our personal name. We can put in a signature. And then down here, we can put in SMTP server settings. We can put in server names, our server ports. Now, these, S these SMTP server settings are essentially our outgoing settings. A nice way to remember that they're outgoing is to remember that SMTP stands for Send Mail to People. It's kind of a cute little acronym. That'll help you remember that these are outgoing mail settings. You can get these outgoing mail settings from your host. You can get them by looking at your account options within Internet Explorer, and then you can plug them in here. And the big benefit of that is then when you send out an email from within Redtail, whether it be a broadcast email or an internal email, it's still going through your server. All right, so all of your security is still, you know, still valid. All of the compliance is still being met. We're just using Redtail as a vessel, essentially. Below that, we have just something for reports where we can change display names of reports. You can put an office brand or a title there. You can put a disclosure statement on there. And then just below that, we have our miscellaneous. And this miscellaneous, not many. We can choose an alert sound. I like the bark, personally. And then we can also add symbols to our market watch list. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you, sort of in line with preferences here, is our managing of database integrations, all right? I'm gonna click on my name again up in the top right-hand corner. I'm gonna click on Manager Integrations. Now, this section allows you to enable and disable a number of integrations that might simply require a click from your mouse or a piece of integration info, all right? So some, if we scroll down a little bit here, let's find a good one. Let's say Laser App. Laser App really it's just a matter of clicking disable, enable, and maybe putting in some settings like your laser app login information and what version you're using. Some require just a toggle on and off, and some require a piece of information like an API key. Now this is by no means the extent of our integrations. These are just ones that you can turn on quickly and easily. A majority of our integrations are still going to be turned on through our support team. So you just reach out to them, call them, email our support team, and they will help you turn on integrations, particularly things like account feeds from aggregators or custodians. So definitely check those out, see what integrations you're using, toggle them on and off, whatever you want, and then they will show up in this integrations button up in your top right icons. We can go ahead and click that integrations button, and then everything that we have enabled is going to be in this list right here. So that's it for site preferences and integrations. We got one more that's going to walk through all of the resources that you have. Make sure you check that out, and then all of your getting started tutorials are done.